Hi, welcome to the Prairie Oaks pulpit. This is our Bible study from my couch, and we're continuing our trip through the Psalms. Psalm 23. Yeah, you heard that right. This is one of the most familiar Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. And we won't do it justice, but we're going to unpack some of the rich meaning that is going on here. As David, who was a shepherd himself, puts himself in the place of sheep and looks to his God as his shepherd. Which is kind of an interesting picture. Um, you know, in the Christmas story, we're often told that shepherds were kind of looked down upon. They weren't uh, admired. We know that when the children of Jacob came to Egypt, shepherds were kind of looked down upon. But a lot of the Middle East looks up to shepherds, and they were quick to compare their kings to shepherds, or at least that they should be good shepherds. And even uh, some of the pagans described their gods as shepherds. But we know that David, who spent a lot of time as a true shepherd, he knows who is the good shepherd. And we're going to unpack that. So Psalm 23, I encourage you to look at it with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So David says, The Lord is my shepherd, the one who is my protector, provider, defender. And he says, first and foremost, he starts, is that his needs are taken care of because the Lord Jehovah is his shepherd. My shepherd, not just our shepherd. Remember from Psalm 100, when we looked at it, that know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We together. But David applies it to him individually. He is my shepherd. A shepherd has more than one sheep. But every sheep is important to the shepherd. And he says, I'm not going to lack for anything. That's what he's saying there when he says, I shall not want. I will not lack anything that I need. And then he begins to unpack what that means. And the first one is, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. And so, a sheep, as the little grazers that they are, they need green pastures. And in that part of the, of the Middle East, green pastures can be hard to find. But the shepherd knows where to take his sheep so that they have something to graze. And they are at peace and safe there. A sheep can't lay down unless it feels like it can be safe. Because they're cumbersome creature, creatures, uh, pretty helpless. And so he won't lie down. She won't lie down unless the sheep feels safe and secure. But with the shepherd, they can lie down in those green pastures. Led beside the still waters. So here we have our two basic needs, food and water. The Lord is the provider of that. And in that also is not only security, safety, but the stillness of the waters is speaking of peace, a peace within. 
We live in a noisy cacophony of a world with electronic devices and all these things going off. But he's the one who can give a peace that passes understanding. And sheep need that kind of peace. And he restores my soul. The very breathing part of me is refreshed and renewed by God. And so you can see, David knows he has greater needs than just what his sheep would need. And God provides even that. He restores my soul. That is something that as I uh, pray, asking for God to create in me a clean heart, to renew my mind through his word, restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and to refresh my spirit. Going towards that, restoring my soul. We grow weary walking through this world. He's the one who can restore and refresh. And so he's providing and doing. But it's not just stationary. We're on the move. And sheep need to be moved. David knew that because they grazed down to desert if they weren't constantly on the move. And so there's... Even that in Psalm 23. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus said to what? Follow him. Follow him. He's going somewhere. We're to go with him. And that's how a shepherd in those in the part of the world led their sheep. See that in John chapter 10. He goes before them. And they follow him. Unless they're going to go astray. And sheep are pretty helpless. They need their shepherd. They need to follow the shepherd. But he's going to follow, they're going to follow him in paths of righteousness. So that they are doing what is right. It is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure which really kind of points us back to our first psalm that we did two weeks ago. In Psalm 1, do you remember? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the, in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And so here we see the Lord leads us in paths of righteousness. And one of the reasons he does that is, is for our good, so that we can be prosperous like the tree planted by the rivers of water. Psalm 1 ended with the promise, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And so God leads his children in paths of doing what is right. In doing what is right. But it's not just for their good, it's also for his glory. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, for his reputation. As his representatives in the world, he leads us in righteousness. So one of the reasons God has left us here is to continue to transform us. You know, we, we've talked about how God has prepared a place for us but he's also preparing us for the place. We're not ready for the place yet. And he's in the process of preparing us for it. And so he leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, for his reputation, for his praise. And so it does us well to cooperate with God's leading through his word, as we saw in Psalm 1, as we become more righteous. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled, Jesus said. Let us have a hunger and a thirst for doing what is right in God's eyes. Because the best part is, is our righteousness isn't worth much, but it is done in gratitude for the righteousness he has already given us. In Christ, we're declared in right standing with him. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And those paths that bring us towards righteousness sometimes can be pretty challenging, can't they? To grow our faith. That's where verse 4 comes in. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The shepherd is leading us in paths of righteousness that will include a walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When it feels like our life is in danger, will we still trust the shepherd? When it feels like the darkness is overwhelming us, will we still trust the shepherd? I will fear no evil, the psalmist says. Why? For you are with me. We should never forget in the dark what we have learned in the light. That God is with us. The shepherd, he has his rod and his staff and they comfort me. The rod is an instrument of protection. It is an instrument of protection to knock away enemies. We saw the rod in Psalm 2 last week. That the Messiah, the king anointed on God's holy hill, he carries a rod. That with his rod, you shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. He's here to defeat our enemies. And our biggest enemy is sin, death, and the devil. We no longer have to fear those enemies. He's already defeated them. His run and his staff, his walking stick, used to guide the sheep, to point the way. These are a comfort to me. So I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even through death itself, and fear no evil, because God is with us. And the tools of his trade, they are a comfort to me. I don't have to fear them because I'm not one of the enemies. I'm his sheep, the sheep of his pasture. Now, the next couple verses don't really sound like shepherd stuff. And this is where I kind of encourage you to find the resource. A shepherd looks at Psalm 23. It's by a guy named Philip Keller. And it's a really good resource. And he gives some interesting insight in these verses from a shepherd's point of view. And so I encourage you to read that and look through that. But it also is a metaphor that seems to be referencing the, the gracious host. But either way, however you choose to look at this, David says, you've prepared a feast for me, a table, whether it's the table lands of pasture or a banquet, and even in the presence of my enemies, so that my enemies know God is with me. God has provided for me. That not only do the enemies know this, but even when I'm surrounded by enemies, God is taking care of me. God provides. There's a fellow in the life of David by the name of Barzilla. What a name, right? But as David was on the run from Absalom, his own son, and hiding in the wilderness, this guy shows up and prepares a feast to feed David and his army. He is a picture of the Lord doing this as the good shepherd. 
the Lord provides. And he sometimes uses people to do it, doesn't he? You anoint my head with oil. Now, I did a little research on this because I really figured this was talking about the anointing, you know, like the Holy Spirit, the Messiah, like a king would be anointed. But that's a different word. This one's just talking about he's smearing our heads with oil. But it's something that in a dry, dusty climate where the skin gets cracked, oh, it feels soothing in that regard. And so it is speaking of that kind of tender care. And one where, again, in that dry environment, you want a cup that runs over. That you can drink to your fill and be refreshed and be renewed. Because again, this world is a weary, taxing, exhausting place. But God is a provider. And it doesn't end. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That word follow is pursue. It's like being chased down. But instead of being chased down by a wolf or a lion or a bear, being chased by goodness and mercy, the covenant love of God, ever faithful pursuing me all the days of my life, even when I stray, like the good shepherd that Jesus spoke of who left the 99 in the sheepfold so he could go find the one that had gone astray. And he brings it back rejoicing. Not scolding. Rejoicing. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David says, that's where I want to be. Is in the presence of the Lord. To feel secure in his home. As a member of the family. Because this is possible in Christ. He came as a sheep for us. We as sheep do go astray. All we like sheep have gone astray. We each have gone our own way. But the Lord laid the iniquity of us all on the servant who came as the Lamb of God to take away all the sins of the world. And the lamb that was slain died for us. He, sheep, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He's not like the hireling that runs away. He can lay down his life because he has the power to bring it back again. And so the good shepherd is the lamb who lived the sinless life that we needed to live but couldn't. So he did it for us. And then his righteousness is imputed to us and our sin is laid upon him. And so he is a, the lamb that is slain from the foundation of the world even for all of us. The infinite God who paid the infinite price for all the infinite number of sins of an infinite number of people in that finite afternoon. He did it all, paid it all for us so that Raising from the dead, he could be our good shepherd so that he can give us an eternal life that no one can snatch us out of his hands. If you want to know more about that, I encourage you to look in John chapter 10 where he speaks of being the door of the sheep and the good shepherd and that security. They shall not perish, nor shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. No one will snatch them out of the Father's hand. There's a lot in here about sheep and the shepherd. It's a wonderful metaphor for how our God cares for us. All the way to the end. Because the end is when we're in his house. Forever and ever. God bless. Thank you for looking at the Psalm 23 with me. Meditate on it and keep learning from it.